Greetings, everybody. It is I, Jinzo Fighter, back for my first solo playthrough in a very, <clears throat> very long time. Now, those of you who followed me for a while obviously know that last year, with my friends Matt and Austin, um, I did a... Well, I wasn't the one who played it, but we did a coin toss playthrough, we'll call it, of Shadow the Hedgehog, essentially, because this game follows different uh, different paths. It has a morality system. Depending on which mission you do in a level, there's usually three of them, you go on a different path throughout the game. We decided it would be a good idea to coin toss between missions and see what we get. We notoriously spent over 50-something minutes I think it was 54 on Lost Impact alone. Lost Impact is one of the stage fives of the game that is notorious for a lot of reasons, but my rules for this follow-up LP, which I'm doing by myself since Matt and Austin aren't really available right now, is I'm not allowed to go to any stage barring Westopolis that Matt already went to in his playthrough. So if there's, at, if there's a point where I have no choice but to go to a, either a level that Matt already went to, or the one I haven't been to yet, I'm going to take the one I haven't been to yet. So yeah. Shadow the Hedgehog is quite the infamous beast of a game. A lot of people would say this began the Dark Age of Sonic. There is a part of me that still enjoys aspects of this game. When they get the missions right, like in Space Gadget, I think it's pretty enjoyable. But I'm not dumb, and I recognize that most of this game was pretty badly designed. But we'll get more into that in a bit. Obviously you can hear right here, the, the menu sounds are all gun clicks. And I'm not gonna well, actually, I will talk over the cutscene since there, there are subtitles. So we'll be starting a new game here, and hopefully, you can, we can relax a little bit. I mean, because a lot of Matt's playthrough, particularly Mad Matrix and Lost Impact, was very, very hectic. Granted, that was only his second time playing the game because we had attempted something similar before with a slightly different recording method, and the footage crapped out on us. Like, it was all glitchy and shit. We couldn't use it. So we re-recorded it. That was back when I used a different upscaler Maria. compared to the one I'm using now. Who am I? That's something I should get out of the way right now. My Dell has been kind of back and forth with whether it wants to work or not. I recently did a full system restore on it. Um, the one that was essentially right near the beginning of where I last installed Windows. It kept my files, so I'm going to be able to salvage a project or two that I recorded with Matt along during that time. You're in for a treat, I'll say that much. And I do want to get to recording and streaming more often, even with school being on the horizon. So what I'm going to do for this, um, as opposed to what we did for the first coin toss playthrough, is I'm going to keep it to two levels. I'm going to try and keep it to two levels per part, just because you know it'll be slightly easier on the slightly easier on the editing. So this will probably be like only three parts long. We'll see which levels I get though. So I'm going to flip a coin here. If it's heads, I will go to Lethal Highway after beating the hero mission. If it's tails, I will go to Digital Circuit after beating the dark mission. So here it goes. It's tails, we're doing dark. And in Mad Matrix, we're doing the dark mission since the hero mission will take us back to Prison Island, which Matt already went to in his playthrough. And we're not looking for redundancy here. In a game that's full to the brim, and that's filled to the brim with it. Time to go and fulfill this promise. The, the amount of times 
that Westopolis is mandatory to play, no less than 10, because there are 10 different endings to this game. You gotta get 10, you gotta get all 10 endings, and then you'll unlock the final story, which is considered canon in the Sonic universe. Yeah, a lot of this, other than the, the intro cutscene, pretty much all of it is in canon. Like, Shadow still meets Black Doom, but in the last story, he ends up on the on the Black Comet. And I'm doing the Dark Mission, so I gotta be defeating the humans. Not sure if I passed any here. Nope. So I'm gonna be ignoring the, the Black Arms, at least for this mission. Except for this one, because he's mandatory. And that's the first Chaos Emerald, you always get it that way, regardless of how you play the level. It's mandatory. I don't even think you can get uh, your Hero Gauge or Dark Gauge full before collecting it. It's the justification behind why Shadow can use Chaos Control and Chaos Blast, even though in the last story, he can perfectly use Chaos Control in Final Haunt, despite the fact that Black Doom is still in all the Emeralds, so that doesn't really make sense. But, on the other hand, you could assume that Shadow is capable of Chaos Control naturally. It's just the Chaos Emerald increases the, the range of where you can teleport to. Which, that is a fairly... A fairly uh, that has some truth to it. Because again, he can use Chaos Control in this game without Emeralds. And he does in, he does in Sonic 06 as well in his opening cutscene. I'm remembering it right. He like has that blue flash. So what I have right now is because I filled up my dark meter in the upper left is Chaos Blast. I push Y. I'm just going to demonstrate. It's chaos. It's just destroys everything around you. It's handy for bosses, though. I think for as a rule. It's harder to get Chaos Blast in boss fights than it is for Chaos Control. I will be using special weapons. Uh, for the record, these do not; these are not available when you first start the game. You unlock each one after getting a an ending, after getting an ending. And what I'm holding right now is the satellite laser. You get it from beating either one of the either one of the semi dark missions after black comet so that's how you get that and i may as well ride the vehicle here even though there really isn't a point vehicles in this game kind of suck ass yeah screw that it's not really helping me so with the satellite laser, I get to copy lasers like that one we just saw. <laughs> never really understood, uh, never really explained where they come from. Maybe you can assume Black Doom has ships above that are just tearing the city apart. I don't know though. Then again, these gun agents, they do say, what the heck is HQ doing? So maybe higher-ups in GUN are thinking of destroying the city to get rid of the Black Arms? I hope I didn't miss any gun troops. Because that's the thing with this game. With, uh, with very few exceptions. I think that little beetle I just passed up there was one. With very few exceptions... They always give you exactly enough enemies to defeat in these kinds of missions. Yep, I missed two of them, so we gotta go back to the beginning. Nope. Screw you, Sonic. I'm on the side of evil. And I don't often miss troops in this level. It's the simplest one. I mean, so long as you uh, keep your eyes out and don't, like, just zoom past everything, assuming you're not doing the neutral mission, 
which for every neutral mission, every neutral mission in this game is just get to the goal room. I suspect we won't be doing much of those, but in this playthrough anyway, but you never know. Yeah, I may have passed some over here. Oops. So that's the thing. Even if you're doing the dark mission, black arms will still attack you. If you're doing the hero mission, gun troops will still attack you. And the same thing applies to Eggman's robots, who we'll probably be seeing later on. So, so far, we haven't found the troops that we're missing. It's not worth it. Where are they? Oh, pff. there's there's one with the squirts. <laughs> Um, I bet I know where the next one is. After this little loop here. And I guess I can show off what's behind the five key door. Every level has one of these. It's just another vehicle. Nothing too special, honestly. Other levels contain shortcuts. Some of them contain, like, really powerful weapons. Sometimes they're just in inconsequential, like that one was. Yeah, see? There they go again, shooting at me even though I'm working for them. Then again, with the nature of how these this game's paths can be, like serving, one, serving Black Doom one level, and then serving the human forces in the next one, maybe they're anticipating betrayal. Who knows? Um, where is this last gun troop? Was it that one I passed? In the little falling down sequence? I'm gonna try shooting at him again. But can I aim in this sequence? No, I can't. Wait, yeah, I can. Oh, I missed him. Did he even count? Or did I just hit the thing? I'm gonna take your weapon. And go back. I have a feeling that that robot might have been... May have been mandatory to kill. This prison island has a robot exactly like it. I think I passed him again and the... Auto-aim didn't turn on, because this... This game actually does have decent shooting mechanics. Usually it auto-aims for you. Not in, not for every weapon, though. But for some of them, yeah, it does. Oh my god. Please do not let this be the whole part. <laughs> I know for a fact there aren't any down here. This is just a little switch thing. Oh lord. <laughs> we may have to cut here. My cut is in edit. Not cut is in end the part. Yeah, I did not expect to have this much trouble on the first level. The recording curse, I'm telling you. Maybe I should have practiced, but part of the fun is, you know, doing some of these missions for the first time in a while and seeing how I fare. Oh my god. <laughs> and run right into a plant. There we go. Doom's eye just materializes out of nowhere there. What am I missing here? How about not?
I have looked in every nook and cranny of this level, and I cannot find this last gun troop. Oh my god. At least I found five rings. Oh Jesus. All right, cut. Oh my God. Unless you can kill the helicopter, which I'm pretty sure you can't. Played this game enough to know that you can't do that. God damn. This is awful. <laughs> oh boy. Hopefully I don't get many more of these kinds of missions. Okay, it was that one that I passed by. I thought that one was wasn't mandatory. Anybody Apparently it is. My way is my enemy. Obviously I'm not leaving all that wandering around in. <clears throat> Most of it's probably gonna get cut. Look at that, 12 and a half minutes, rank D. That is the longest I have ever spent in Westopolis. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, we're headed to Mad Matrix, er, not Mad Matrix, uh, Digital Circuit. Mad Matrix was the one Matt visited. Though the two levels are very, very similar aesthetically. They both take place in cyberspace. Black aliens have hit six major cities around the world, and every city is reporting significant Notice how that soldier's mouth is not even moving. They were pretty lazy with the models. Downtown Westopolis has been almost completely destroyed. Unconfirmed sources have also reported... Unconfirmed sources? Do, uh, do you suppose that might be Sonic? Deploy the troops now! They never do. They never do explain who the unconfirmed sources are. Okay, it's probably my upscaler, but I don't remember the light shining that bright on the gun commander's face. There, that is, that is weird. It's like he's literally, he, he believes his own hype that much that he's convinced that he's this child of God. Sent to destroy Shadow. That would explain why he calls him a devil in the Diablon fight, which we may very well be getting to in this playthrough. It'd make for a good parallel to Matt's since he ended that playthrough. Well, technically, Austin and I did because Matt left early. We ended that playthrough fighting Black Doom. So it'd be a nice parallel to fight Diablon in this. Shadow takes no shit. So probably gonna probably gonna cut the video after we beat Digital Circuit and get to Cryptic Castle, which I'm gonna have to pick the the missions that I'm gonna be choosing between in that, because every stage four that you could get to after that one, there's Central City, the Doom, and um, what is it? Not Glyphic Canyon, but. I'm I'm not remembering the, the stage the way I remember the music by heart. Skyfleet or something like that. I just remember the music track kicks ass. That's what I know for sure. At least to me it does. This game's got the quite the underrated soundtrack. Digital, Digital Circuit's a pretty fun level. I mean, there's uh, it only has two missions, a hero mission and a dark mission. Hero mission is you're helping Rouge get to the goal ring, because you need to find a Chaos Emerald. Dark mission is helping Doom's Eye here essentially get to another goal ring, like getting to the core of <clears throat> the cyberspace and destroying it. These kinds of levels work. Like, they, they honest to god do. Because had Shadow the Hedgehog received more of this kind of level design and mission design, like multiple paths, 
I don't think it would have been received as badly as it was. I mean, the story's still kind of ass, but at least the gameplay would be more well-received. As such, we only get a few missions in the game that are like this. Space Gadget being one of them. Space Gadget is one, uh, Cosmic Fall is another. Um, can't think of many others, honestly, that have this sort of multiple goal, uh, goal ring like substitute missions. So we're going to be ignoring Rouge here. We're going for the Dark Mission because we don't want to go back to Prison Island. As I said before. Now go! If you've watched, uh, if you're familiar with Shadow the Hedgehog, you probably know, know this, or if you don't, then you will know now, but Black Doom is voiced by Sean Schemmel, aka Goku. That's a pretty cool little tidbit of info. It just goes to show that even though I didn't really watch Dragon Ball Z until, until like, spring of 2016 when I was 17 years old, Sean Schemmel did play a small part of my childhood. So that is, that's pretty neat. And I have to say, he did perform the role well. Even if it does blatantly sound like Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. I guess now's a good time to show off our, the second of the, the dark special weapons. The, I don't remember the name of this sword. Maybe this is a samurai sword or something generic like that. But it's great because after you unlock its level two from the other true dark ending, because you unlock it first from getting a true dark ending, and then the other one unlocks level two. This goes for every other special weapon, except for the shadow rifle, I think. Not too sure on that one, honestly. But you can swing it from a distance. I'm not going to waste it on these panels. But you can swing it from a distance, and you have this little beam of energy that comes out. That doesn't detract from your from your ammo unless the sword actually comes into contact with something. So it's the only weapon in the game, in a way, that has unlimited ammo. And that's handy. It does a decent amount of damage, too. Like whether you swing the sword, whether the sword makes contact with an enemy, or if you use the beam. It's just too bad, even at level 2, you only get 8 swings, assuming you're using it like a normal sword. So a little tip when you're using the sword is to stick to long range combat mostly. You'll get more, much more usage out of it that way. Like I am doing right here. Except, I don't know. A few times when I swung it there, it felt like the beam didn't come out at all. So it might be hit and miss. Excuse the unintentional pun there. Long pole elevator thing is long. I've mistimed my jump there before and fallen to my doom. Don't do that. Now, do I have all five keys here? Whoa. I don't want to fall. Yes, I do. I believe this is a shortcut. Yeah. It's a warp, uh, warp hole. They'll show up in Mad Matrix. And they might show up in a couple other levels. This is essentially a little path around all the firewalls, and it takes you a little further in the level. And I actually haven't done that in a while. I think we're back on the normal path now. The secret path doesn't go for too long. And you don't want to hit those firewalls because you lose rings. I've never died to one before. At least, I don't remember dying to one.
Because this is one of the only Sonic games, the other one being Sonic Unleashed. At least I'm pretty sure that they're the only two games to do this. Um, you don't lose all your rings when you take a hit. You only lose 20. So this can help your score, in a way. So long as you like don't fall into a bottomless pit. You can maintain a really high ring bonus. And it's instances like this, where even if you're doing the hero mission, you're forced to kill one of your... Uh, a troop on your side. Oh, pff, why did I think my homing attack would make it? Yes. Goodbye, sword. I don't know when we'll see you again. But yeah, like I was saying, there are times when you'll be doing the hero mission and you're forced to kill a gun troop to progress in the level. Same thing with... And same thing goes for the Black Arms. And as well as Eggman's Robots. It's a stupid design choice. One, again, one that could have been circumvented had they had more multiple path style missions. Like, you do the hero mission and you only encounter Black Arms troops. You do the dark mission, you only encounter gun troops. Or Eggman robots or whatever. Because um, Eggman's robots are kind of an oddity among the troops. There are some levels where where they'll act as the dark troops fighting against the gun soldiers. And there's the normal gold ring over there. Um, so yeah, sometimes the sometimes Eggman's robots will be considered the dark troops. Other times, such as in Sky Troops, that's the level name from earlier that I was trying to remember. In levels like that one. Eggman's robots are considered the lesser of two evils because they're fighting against the Black Arms. And that's just a little oddity. And Sky Troops is the only level where Eggman is the hero partner instead of the dark one. And spoiler alert, in the last story, he and Eggman... Uh, Eggman and Sonic, I should say, team up. They try to team up to convince Shadow to... Uh, turn against Black Doom and all that. Pretty standard for Sonic at this point. At least at the time it was. Now Eggman's more back to his villainous ways. He was the final boss of Colors. He was the penultimate boss of Unleashed. He, and the, along with the Time Eater, was the final boss of Generations. Yeah, he's he's seen a resurgence as of late. He's the final boss in Forces, too. Which, I haven't had the chance to play that, but... I know fan response has been polarizing. But that's neither here nor there. What I'm holding right now is the Shadow Rifle, the most powerful weapon in the game. Kills everything, barring Experimental Chaos, in one hit. I don't think you can use it against any bosses, so it's kind of moved there, but... Regular enemies... If it's not an experimental chaos, it'll kill it in one hit. You get 20 shots. That's more than the sword gets. <laughs> and it's a pretty neat weapon. Just bear in mind that you won't have access to it. Why am I missing this jump? Until you... <clears throat> until you beat the final story. And even then, I'm not sure if you get the 20 shots right away or if you have to beat it a second time. Like with the like getting each particular ending to increase the ammo count or default ammo count anyway because what you can do for increasing your ammo in this game is to just collect more than one of the same weapon that last shot probably wasn't necessary but all 19 other shots from the shadow rifle Whatever took out the core no problem so that's the dark mission of Digital Circuit. Again, a decent level. I like Space Gadget a little more, but this one wasn't bad. So I think I'm going to let the cutscenes leading up to Cryptic Castle play out, and then I'll cut the part here. Because I'm trying to keep it to two levels per part. Ground troops have successfully pushed back the black aliens 
Now, the president here is actually voiced by, get this, Matty Blaustein, also known as former voice of Meowth in Pokemon, as well as Solomon Moto in the 4Kids dub of Yu-Gi-Oh. And I think uh, Yu-Gi-Oh GX as well, Solomon Moto's other appearances up until Matty Blaustein's death. Because I know in Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Side of Dimensions, Solomon has a different voice actor. Sounds pretty close to Matty, though. Though, I think in this cutscene, compared to others, such as the one before, right before Gun Fortress, Matty was directed differently. Because she's more, like, loud and upfront in this one than she is, like, in scenes when she talks to the... Uh, when he, sorry, gun command, uh, president talks to the gun commander. Like, the one just before Air Fleet. That's another example of a more subdued delivery from the president. Which, if I get Air Fleet's dark mission, that's going to be a fun time. <laughs> there, are, It has one of the game's three chase missions, and I consider that one to be the most difficult of the three. I'll elaborate more if we end up playing that level. But, for now, I'm going to cut the part. I will see you next time when we tackle Cryptic Castle. See you then. This way.